欢迎大家。Welcome to the press briefing today. We have on stage three doctors, Doctor Edwin Choi, controller of the Center for Health Protection, Doctor Chuang Shukwan. Um, Com uh, Communicable Disease Branch Center for Health Protection and Dr. Lara Lee, Chief Manager, Hospital Authority. Now, Dr. Lee will gi um, give you an update on hospitality. Dr. Trump will give you an update on number of cases, and then Dr. Edwin Choi will um, um, give a con uh, make some concluding remarks. First, Dr. Lee. Now, there are 2,941 patients in hospitals. 40, 407 are new cases. 550 are in isolation facilities. Uh, isolation was 151 in uh, first tier. Second tier isolation was uh, 594 in North Tower Hospital, Hong Kong Infection Control Center. 263 in COVID-19 Treatment Center at KWE. And 290 of those in isolation facilities are new patients. Uh, nine are in critical condition. Uh, uh, one has uh, four jabs, two free jabs, uh, four two jabs, and two have low vaccination records. Ten patients are in serious condition. Among the patients in hospital, there are in total 54 critically ill and 55 seriously ill patients. Uh, 14 are in uh, ICUs. For uh, uh, there are newly reported nine death cases, seven males and two females aged between 27 to 99. Among the six deceased. Um, among the 96 uh, did not complete uh, the three doses of vaccination. Two were residential care home residents. Among the nine deceased patients, seven um, deaths were related to was related to COVID. Two uh, may not be related or their suspicion. Now I'll go through the cases. Uh, 78, 78 year old male. Um, no, that he had a clinical disease. Uh, he was admitted by the Yan Chai Hospital. He had shortness of breath and fever. Uh, pneumonia was found, and then his condition continued to worsen. He passed away on the fourth. A uh, second. Um, 90-year-old male. He had three doses of vaccination. He was received. Uh, he was admitted by the uh, Rottenji Hospital A and E department. He uh, his RIT test was positive. PRCR test was also positive, and then he passed away on the fifth. Uh, third uh, patient, was 87-year male. He had a uh, history of cancer and he had hypertension. He was admitted uh, end uh, August uh, by the. Um, uh, Princess Margaret Hospital, and then uh, he had pneumonia, and then he passed away on the 5th of September. The fourth, 73 year old female, uh, he have, she had three doses, she had dementia and um, diabetes. She was admitted by the Rotenji uh, A and E department. Uh, she has shortness breath, fever, and also pneumonia, and she passed away on the 5th of September. Fifth patient, 73 year old residential care home resident. He had three doses of vaccine. He had um, a sclerosis. Uh, he was admitted by the Queen Elizabeth A and E department. He had fever, and then he tested positive, and then his condition was in the past way on the 5th of September. Then sixth patient, 99 year old male. He had two doses of vaccine. He had um, heart disease. Uh, uh, he was admitted by the Yan Chai A and E department. He had fever and shortness of breath, and then X-ray showed he she had he had pneumonia. He passed away on the fifth of September. The seventh patient, 88-year-old female, she had two doses of vaccine. She had cardiac disease and uh, diabetes. She he was admitted by the uh, United Christian Hospital. And then X-ray showed her she had pneumonia. Her condition worsened after being hospitalized. In part, she passed away on the fifth of September. The eighth patient, we believe, her, his death had nothing to do with COVID. Eighty-seven year old male. He was admitted by the Queen Elizabeth. Um, brain scan showed he had um, um, brain hemorrhage. He was uh, sub admitted to the surgical ward. He passed away on the fifth of September. The last patient, we're not sure if he his death related to COVID. Twenty-seven year old male with two doses of vaccine. He um, was bedridden, and uh, she, she, he had. Um, uh, different uh, chronic diseases. He he was found unconscious at home, and he was admitted by the uh, Trunkano um, A and E department. Um, the RET test was positive. After his resuscitation, uh, he his um, pulse revived, and but and then uh, PCR test also was positive. But then um, he passed away on the fifth of September. 
In the past days, 369 patients recovered, 322, 29 patients were discharged, 10 patients uh, were tested positive upon uh, hospital admission screening, and 29 patients uh, listed at uh, close contact. 243 page staff members became infected, 210 staff members returned to work. For uh, Pamela Yonadaso Eastern Hospital, seven um, patient, doctors from the surgical ward uh, confirmed patients uh, uh, from the 4th of September. Seven page, uh, doctors, um, specialists in heart disease, um, um, were found uh, infected, but they did not attend um, social gathering together, but then they used the uh, pantry in the ward uh, at separate times. So we have uh, investigated. Uh, such investigation um, in terms of epidemiological links, and then the relevant uh, department is still maintaining normal service, but we have suspended some of the non-emergency uh, services. As for other um, um, heart specialist team in the hospital, they will be giving uh, uh, support and assistance. There has been uh, disinfection. The hospital is now closely monitoring the situation. We're keeping close liaison with the department's health. That's all for me. Good afternoon. Yesterday, total number of new cases yesterday, 9,187. 2,418 um, PCR positive cases, 6,769 RAT positive cases. There are 186 imported cases. Of those, as 169 are PCR positive cases and 17 RAT positive cases. Among the uh, 186 imported cases, that includes 81 cases found at the airport, and then um, uh, for, for cases found in, a, in days one to three at Harrington Hospital, 61. And then days six, four, seven, uh, four to seven at a community level, 31 cases found. And then uh, days eight to 10 cases found at uh, day community testing stations, 13. So these cases came from 44 places and f six places imported more than 10 cases, 21 UK, 19 India, 16 for the Philippines, uh, Canada, 15 USA and Thailand, 13 cases each. For the remaining 38 places, they imported a total of, uh, uh, they imported less than 10 cases each. As mentioned, uh, Dr. Lee said there are nine death cases today. So for the fifth wave, the total number of death cases is 9,536. For residential care homes, there are a number of homes uh, with cases. Some people have to be quarantined. Hong Fook, um, uh, home for the elderly, uh, two residents uh, confirmed cases, 15 need to be Quarantine, Yang Yan Chai Hospital, Chi Man Kun, home for the elderly. Uh, one resident uh, con is confirmed case two needs to be quarantined. Uh, Hong Wai, um, uh, home for the elderly. One resident infected two to be quarantined. And then another uh, home, one infected nine needs to be quarantined. And then Shek Wai Kok Shek, um, um, home, um, one resident infected one to be quarantined. Kim Hak, uh, home for the elderly in Mong Kok, one infected, five uh, quarantined. Hong Yen Yun, one in Tim Moon, one resident infected, five needs to be quarantined. For schools, 767 hot schools reported 1,516 cases today. 1,304 students and 212 teachers or teaching staff are infected. This 1,516 cases came from 187 kindergartens and nurseries, 280 primary schools, 280 uh, uh, secondary schools and 15 special schools. In the past seven days, 532 schools reported two cases or more. So we have recommended 45 schools to suspend 54 classes for one week. That includes uh, 15 kindergartens uh, and nurseries, uh, 11 primary schools, 14 secondary schools, and five special schools. As for the details of the 45 uh, schools, because the list is too long, I won't be giving you the names one by one. For um, the subvariants today, uh, on the uh, 3rd of September, we received um, the positive samples uh, ratio for BA. 0.4 to 5 is 66%. Uh, Suspected BA 2.12.1, um, 6.6%. So it's similar to that for yesterday. So perhaps uh, every day the figures may vary a bit. 
And then if we um, work out the percent, the ratio, then for BA5, uh, it's about 60%. There's suspected cases and suspected BA.4 cases, about 6.6%. BA suspected BA2.1, 2.1 cases, about 16, 6.6% too. The remaining is suspected to BA2.2 cases, about 27%. So that's all from me today. Thank you. Oh. Controller Choi, friends of um, the, the media, fellow citizens, I'd like to make a plea. As um, the cases or caseload is rising, we have received um, quite a lot of uh, hotline inquiries. The c has received uh, 140,000 calls through the hotline. I'd like to let the public know that we fully appreciate that with uh, new measures like the vaccine pass measures, um, the members of the public would have a lot of questions. I'd like to make a few pleas. If people can have access to the uh, online information, they should take full advantage of that. We do have a platform for the information. If they fail to get the information, we do have different hotlines at the moment, but there are a number of hotlines whereby people can um, make inquiries. Now, let me uh, tell you the numbers first and supplement, supplement further information that the CHP number, 1830111, this is uh, number most familiar to the public. We do have different plans with different hotlines, and the um, HAD's um, hotline uh, for um, stay home um, measure, 1830, 1833019, 1833019. If people need um, medical support, um, they can use the HA hotline. Uh, one a three six one one five one eight three six one one five. If people um, report on the R A T platform and if they experience difficulties, the number to call is one eight three six one one nine. One eight three six one one nine. This is an automatic system to register the um, positive cases. All you need to do when you call through uh, is to uh, register your ID number, and we'll be calling you back. And you are well, welcome to call through one eight three six one one nine. And the other one is um, regarding the change of um, the health code uh, from red um, or amber to blue, or they have any general question about the uh, code switch. Uh, we have a hotline from Audio. Uh, that's um, the Audio number. Uh, that's two six two six three zero six six two six two six three zero six six, and we welcome. And the members of the public to call through the hotlines with the, the, the inquiries. Now, from the uh, telephone inquiries, uh, we get to understand that people are very concerned about the vaccine pass measures, and people would like to um, report old uh, cases. Now, we are dealing with uh, cases up to September. If the members of the public forgot to make the declaration, if they have any record, uh, dating back to uh, August or a couple of months ago, they, they should not uh, make the declaration via this platform. We will not be entertaining this. If um, the public uh, fail to make any declaration and if um, they have any concerns about the vaccine pass, I'd like to tell the public that the, the vaccines are really safe. 28 days after recovery, one can take um, the next jab. If one wants to fulfill the vaccine pass criteria, um, they should not uh, be reporting the old uh, infection cases. We will be improving uh, the availability of information online. Uh, there will be um, FAQs uh, to make available more information um, to the uh, members of the public. So much I have to say by way of um, supplement. And I'd like to say a little bit about the monkeypox. Uh, yesterday, we have received a report regarding a suspected uh, mon monkeypox in this imported case. Um, the uh, patient has arrived uh, at the quarantine hotel, and he developed some discomfort. He was sent to the A&E for further investigation and examination. And upon um, testing. Uh, this has been confirmed as a case of uh, monkeypox, and this is PCR positive. And this has not found its way into the community. This is um, 
a, an important case. Perhaps um, Dr. Chuang um, might wish to brief uh, members on further details about the monkeypox, and I welcome um, questions that you may have from the floor. Right, this case is a 30-year-old male. On August 30th, he uh, started having some rash on the skin, and this uh, has extended to other parts of the body. On um, September 2nd, there is some uh, lymph, uh, uh, lymph uh, swelling, and he also developed some uh, sore throat. He arrived in Hong at Hong Kong on September 5th from the Philippines, and he stayed in the Philippines from uh, September 20, uh, 2nd to 5th, and he was uh, previously in Canada, and uh, he was also uh, living in the States uh, in early August, August 3rd uh, till 25th. And from his context, there was nobody who um, well, was um, confirmed to have uh, monkeypox or suspected to have monkeypox. Uh, he stayed in a Ramada Sevier uh, Hotel, and he developed a sore throat and a difficulty swallowing. And, and he called the um, hotline, and, and he was sent to the uh, Queen Mary Hospital. And from the uh, skin rash and blisters, um, th th they tested the PCR positive and confirmed to be uh, monkey pox. We became aware of this case, and we uh, conducted epidemiological uh, tracing. Uh, he wasn't with anybody uh, in Hong Kong. And we do have the COVID um, quarantine, and through a closed-loop uh, system, he was sent to the hotel f um, from um, the airport, and he came um, on board uh, PL300, and he was um, dressed in uh, long sleeves and, and long uh, pans uh, all the way through, and he didn't have any contact with anybody else. And he's now uh, is uh, in isolation at the um, QMH. He did engage some high risk activities overseas, and during that time, it is suspected that uh, he was infected. We couldn't find any close contact. Now, this is the very, very first case uh, in Hong Kong, so we have to, to tread carefully. Now, for those uh, who uh, came on board uh, PR330 uh, uh, and the cabin crew and those uh, who took samples from him, and also um, those um, in the um, quarantine hotel, they, they they may be a kid out in PPE, but they, we have reminded them to pay particular attention to their state of health. If they have any discomfort, they should come forward and seek medical attention. Okay. They are not uh, close contacts, but we, we like to, um, to, to exercise uh, more precaution. Now, this is an important case, and in, in accordance with our response plan, uh, we will um, put this um, put Hong Kong on the alert uh, level. We will be issuing the press release and we'll be notifying the medical practitioners in Hong Kong to make them aware of um, the case. And people, if people suffer from um, these kind of symptoms, uh, they should um, undergo uh, testing. In the light of this case, we will be uh, notifying the WHO, the mainland authorities, and the uh, relevant um, health authorities. Thank you. It's now time for questions. Please uh, raise your hands and uh, wait for the mic to come along. And please identify the organization you represent. Um, the um, last by one row, um, the gentleman in light blue. Cable news. Now, for the monkeypox case, Dr. Chong, you mentioned that he did engage in some high risk activities. What kind of activities? What are the nature of um, the activities? Now, on board the same flight, if um, they share the same toilet, would there be any risk of infection? And also the seven um, cardio cardiac uh, doctors, uh, how many wards uh, did they attend to? How many people have they got in touch with? Did they go to the pantry on the same day? Now, for the school cases, uh, we are looking at um, really an exponential rise on a daily basis. If you don't suspend the class, uh, can you protect the health of the children? Uh, are there schools that experience more cases today? Right, let me address um, the, the question about uh, monkeypox and Dr. Chong and Dr. Lee can supplement. I'm sure you're all familiar with COVID, but then for the transmission channel for 
COVID and money, monkeypox uh, is very different. For one, monkeypox is transmitted through very intimate, con uh, close contact, or p uh, skin, uh, including skin contact. And then uh, on the skin, there probably, um, you know, some media for transmission. The other um, channel of transmission is uh, prolonged contact. So in our investigation, we did not identify any close contact in Hong Kong. As uh, Dr. Chuang said, because this is the first case, we try to be very careful. So for anyone who's been on board of the flight or in a quarantine hotel or at the airport, if uh, they had any contact with uh, the patient, for example, staff who collected the specimen, we uh, suggested they should monitor their own health condition very closely. But then uh, we believe actually there's a very low risk of transmission through such contact, but still we want to play very safe. So far, we have not identified a close contact that needs to be quarantined. Perhaps uh, Dr. Chuang could give you more information about the case now. For schools, There are over 40 schools with more than one class suspended. Four schools need to suspend class, uh, more than one classes for uh, one week. Well, there's a rise in uh, cases in the community. As for schools, well, often these are cases identified by RAT, and so that means these cases did not actually go into the school. Because uh, it's only because there are more cases in the community, so by proportion, uh, well, we are talking about some 690,000 students and over 100,000 teaching staff who've uh, returned to the school, so it's uh, quite a percentage of our population. So if we have about 1,000 cases a day, uh, my ratio is not uh, surprising. And the RAT tests actually effectively uh, prevent such positive cases from going into uh, the schools. And then we will also see if uh, there are a few cases in the same class. If that's the case, it's possible uh, the, the transmission is through pre prior contact, uh, but, uh, but then it could just be in coincidence. But we want to play safe, so if there are a few students uh, who test a positive in the same class, then uh, to play safe, we'll ask that class to be suspended for a week. We hope that these measures will help to prevent um, any major outbreaks in schools. For the seven cardiologists, They were not at the pantry all at the same time. It's starting from the 4th of September, they started to find that they became infected um, one by one. And now the um, pantry is in the center of that, of that floor. So, uh, so, it's not, so it's not because they work in a particular ward, but because they wear a proper um, personal protective gear so others are not affected. Now, you, you um, asked about high-risk uh, activities, but it involves some personal information, so I'm not at liberty to divulge that. But if you uh, um, read uh, information from WHO, you know that the majority of them are male. The median age is 36 years old, and 95% are involved in man-to-man um, -man contact. Next, the one in beige. I'm from Phoenix TV. Are there any measures um, that the government will propose to prevent the spread of monkeypox in Hong Kong? If uh, uh, we have both um, COVID and monkeypox epidemic, uh, what would happen and how would the government respond to that? It said earlier that monkeypox will soon, uh, uh, monkeypox vaccine will soon arrive in Hong Kong. So when could you start um, um, allowing the public to take the vaccine and it will be on a voluntary basis initially? Now, this morning, the chief executive said that the 0 plus 7 option, it uh, depends on the uh, development of the epidemic. So what the, is meant by that and, uh, um, you know, what is the progress in terms of uh, implementing that uh, plan? First, let me talk about monkeypox. Now, COVID has been around for some two years. And during that period, uh, we do have other infectious diseases from time to time. Uh, for the importation of monkeypox cases, or so it's highly likely. For example, this time is an imported case. 
because we have COVID measures in place. So for all arrivals at Hong Kong, they need to be quarantined. And this case did not go into the community because it was during the first day of quarantine that patient uh, was admitted to hospital because he felt unwell. And after we found the, learned that there were uh, monkeypox cases overseas in Hong Kong, we started to make preparation first. There will be, um, uh, you know, uh, for our laboratories, we have already prepared the reference test. So that's why yesterday, as soon as we learned about a case, we could uh, collect a specimen and then confirm it's a monkeypox case today after doing testing. Now, WHO has announced that uh, we are still seeing new uh, overseas uh, monkeypox spaces, especially in the USA and Europe, uh, because we, there is uh, international travel between Hong Kong and these places, so we cannot really prevent cases from being imported in Hong Kong. More importantly is how we could um, stop the spread of the disease in Hong Kong and minimize such spread. And for most uh, monkeypox cases, we see that the majority of them involve uh, male uh, in, uh, and in particular involving man-to-man -man sexual contact. So that's why we have to uh, remind people, if you engage in any high-risk activities, you must um, have proper protection, especially if uh, someone is suspected to have any infectious disease, uh, medical care must be sought at once to prevent the spread of the disease. For Monkeypox and COVID, well, they're very different types of infectious diseases. Now, we want to pre protect the public uh, from um, contracting COVID for other infectious diseases. There are also ways to protect the public. On vaccination for monkeypox vaccine, we are now procuring the vaccine. We believe that uh, it will arrive in Hong Kong in September. Now, the WHO's recommendation and international experience uh, shows that uh, monkeypox uh, vaccine is not for everyone in the community. The first group uh, uh, would be the exposed groups. That, that means uh, close contacts. Hopefully, with the vaccine, we could um, minimize spread of the disease. And the second group would be the high-risk groups, as um, recommended by the WHO, that is uh, medical staff, laboratory staff, or those engaging in high-risk uh, activities, uh, for example, those with man-to-man -man contact. So um, this will also help to prevent the spread of the disease through such high-risk activities. Now, once we have the vaccine, we will first um, administer the vaccine for all the close contacts. But in this case, there are no close contacts, of course. And then secondly, for the reference close high risk groups, we will um, you know, uh, talk to them to see how, uh, how they c would um, uh, take the vaccination voluntarily as soon as possible. So the uh, vaccination arrangement will be very different than that for COVID. Next, please. To the left, the last row, the one in black, I'm from Orange News. For this uh, patient who has contracted monkeypox, what sort of condition is he in? What sort of treatment has been given to him? And then in uh, responding to um, um, monkeypox, does the uh, hospital authority have a plan? And if there should be an outbreak, do you have any contingency plan? A question for the CHP. Uh, it said that the vaccine will arrive in September. How many doses will we get in the first batch? And would the first batch be enough to meet the needs in Hong Kong? And then um, how often do, we have to, uh, do people have to take this vaccine? And then do you have any facilities uh, for the quarantining of uh, close contacts of monkeypox patients? Would it lead to another major out would lead to outbreak? Well, I think you've asked more than 10 questions. Perhaps I will ask Dr. Lee to tell you about the preparations made by the hospitals. Now, for, uh, our infection control experts, uh, when they learned about cases in the overseas, uh, they already started making plans. In terms of uh, hospital beds for such infectious diseases, uh, we would not set aside beds uh, for a particular t disease. Rather, it's about the use of isolation beds. And that explains why, you know, when it comes to the use of isolation beds, uh, there is a demand from time to time. Also, we prepare the uh, right medication. For that patient, he's in stable condition. There's need to do a series of tests on him. And uh, if we go by our guidelines, if the patient is in a stable condition, there may be a need for any 
uh, special medication. But if uh, there are complications or his condition becomes serious, then we could uh, administer certain um, medicine, for example, Sardodifer. Well, the hospital authority actually has stock of such medication. Regarding the preparedness for monkeypox, as I said uh, earlier, we do ha have uh, different levels in our response plan. This is uh, currently an alert level. Now, with the alert level, what we have to do is to monitor the situation to make sure that um, we will uh, make preparation for imported cases and limit um, the spread of um, the disease. Now, uh, monkeypox is not airborne uh, disease. It is um, transmitted via uh, body bodily contact or close contact. So there are certain uh, behaviors or measures uh, that that can uh, limit um, the, the transmission. This is different from uh, airborne um, transmission. If uh, we find close contacts, we have to um, quarantine them. Uh, we have to make sure that um, there will not be any onset of um, the disease. The incubation period is a little bit longer uh, for monkeypox. Now, uh, by international practice, there is a 21-day quarantine period. If we ever identify any close contacts, uh, then there will be a quarantine period of 21 days. If we have um, identified um, the close contacts, we'll be working with um, the DHA, and the um, there will be a quarantine. Um, at the hospital, uh, and then we will have from um, the community uh, facilities uh, coming on stream. Next, um, the lady in white in the middle row, please. Hong Kong 01. Now, for the uh, PYNH, you mentioned um, the pantry, um, that there's the cardiolo cardiology uh, section. Uh, are there many doctors? who have used it. Are you worried that um, the cluster will be spreading? There are seven doctors um, that have come down with uh, COVID. Would, would there be more? Would there be any samples taken from the pantry to, to ascertain whether there is any positive uh, environmental uh, sample? Um, and the question about um, the uh, monkeypox uh, vaccines, how soon will they arrive in Hong Kong? How many doses? And you mentioned um, this will be um, administered on high-risk uh, people. And how many uh, people are we talking about? Will the ordered um, doses be anywhere near sufficient for that? And also, um, a doctor has been arrested in Yunlong for uh, issuing the uh, vaccine exemption certificate appropriately. Will the DH be uh, following up on this? Now, will, if uh, people uh, Getting entrance to certain premises using these kind of certificates, uh, would there be any uh, consequences? Right about the pantry uh, at the cardiology uh, division, other than the seven infected doctors, there are five uh, more who have been uh, to the pantry during that time, but they've all tested negative. For the pantry, um, the hospital will conduct investigation. I'm sure that they will con collect um, environmental sampling. And certainly we will bring you up to date if we have further news. But basically, um, they, it was some um, the uh, cardiologists um, that have been there. About the um, monkeypox vaccines, uh, we already mentioned that a moment ago. The procurement work, um, we have uh, completed the, the contract, and we are taking delivery. Um, they should be arriving in Hong Kong by uh, September. So basically, uh, we're dealing with um, the post-exposure cases, uh, the post-exposure close contacts. It all depends on how many imported cases and how many exposed uh, people. In this case, uh, there are no close contacts now for post-exposure uh, treatment. We don't really need to have um, vaccines. But we're not sure uh, how the situation is going to be panning out because this is only an imported case. If we have to procure um, the vaccines, I'm sure that we have uh, confidence we will be able to procure the right amount. As to pre-exposure uh, use, that that's uh, in connection with the high-risk uh, individuals, the healthcare workers, the lab workers, in theory, they are high-risk uh, people. The healthcare 
workers have to deal with um, the communicable diseases. They are always wearing uh, the PPE, but if there are any inadequacies, uh, and, and they need um, these kind of vaccinations, the number of um, these cases will be small. But we will be dealing with um, the, the situation to identify who would be most suitable for the vaccination and, and who are the high-risk individuals who will um, be administered um, this, this kind of vaccine to minimize the risk. The police um, took action yesterday uh, to deal with um, those who uh, procured the vaccine exemption certificate by inappropriate means. I'd like to remind the public that um, this certificate is meant for those uh, who are medically unfit for inoculation. We are uh, facilitating them to uh, comply with um, the vaccine pass requirement, but from the literature, from um, the relevant information, the vaccines are very safe. Uh, the number of people who are unfit for inoculation would be very small. If we identify anybody who resorted to inappropriate means to obtain this kind of certificate, they will be on the wrong side of the, the criminal law. And if they uh, use a false instrument, the maximum penalty would be 14 years of custodial sentence. So uh, pe people should not um, be um, on the wrong side of the law. They have to, to obtain the certificate um, in the right way. But Criminal investigation is going on. We we are not at liberty to uh, supplement any further. Right, if I may uh, supplement uh, the five cardiologists, um, they are not close contacts. Last row on the left, uh, lady over there, please. Uh, Doctor Stevie B. Also on the monkey pox, the sufferer. Uh, came to Hong Kong. Uh, there were some rashes on his skin. Why is it that he was allowed to board um, the vehicle to go to the hotel? It's because um, he concealed uh, his uh, health condition without making any declaration. When he uh, went to the, I mean, on his way to the quarantine hotel, did he use vaccinated vehicle or, or did he use taxi? Uh, Dr. Choi, you mentioned 21 day incubation period for monkey pox, and we need to rely on the quarantine hotel um, to identify these cases that we are adopting these uh, three plus four um, uh, protocol. Um, is it enough um, to, to guard against the importation of monkeypox? Right, let me explain this. We're not uh, using this three plus four protocol to guard against um, the importation of um, monkeypox. We cannot uh, resort to the uh, quarantine period in the hotel to guard against um, this kind of importation. But at least uh, we do have the quarantine measures to make sure that anybody coming to Hong Kong will stay some time in the quarantine facilities. Now, in this case, uh, he came to Hong Kong and he developed some um, discomfort on the first day. He didn't uh, set foot in the com community. And that's the beauty of the existing system. Now, with regard to the um, monkey pox, uh, we do need um, to rely on the declaration on the part of the public. The, um, with um, the, the skin rashes, it would be hard uh, for us to, to spot them, uh, in particular if they are dressed in long sleeves. So when people are coming to Hong Kong, if they have any discomfort, they should uh, let the staff know about it. And in the community, if anybody suspects that um, they are suffering from this communicable disease, they should seek medical attention. Perhaps Dr. Chong might wish to supplement on the um, situation. Now, he went to the quarantine by, um, the, by a coach. Uh, he didn't have any fever at the time. He had some um, skin rashes um, in some uh, concealed uh, hidden places, which are not visible. Um, the lady in blue, please. Now TV. A 27-year-old um, deceased patient, why do you conclude that um, this is not related to COVID infection? When uh, was he um, infected? Uh, was he infected at home? And I'd like to have more information, please, there. Dr. Choi, you mentioned uh, yesterday 140,000 calls came through the hotline inquiring about the vaccine pass. Now, with um, I mean, are there more inquiries about um, the, the 
uh, vaccine pass requirement for uh, children at the age of five. Will the CHP explain further how soon uh, will the vaccine pass details be uh, made known to the public? Perhaps Dr. Lee could first uh, respond. For the 27-year-old male deceased patient, he's, uh, he was bedridden and he had chronic diseases. Uh, that's, uh, he had mitochondrial disease. At the end of August, he was admitted to uh, by the Chunkan O Accident Emergency Department. He uh, passed out at home. Before that, he didn't uh, have any signs of discomfort. And then we resuscitated him, his heartbeat resumed, but then he passed away on the 5th of November. And I said that we're not, not certain uh, whether his death is uh, related to COVID. Uh, we don't have enough information to make that assessment. Now, in the past few days, we received calls from, uh, on the hotlines. People asked about uh, various um, asked various questions, and um, very often the, the inquiries were about um, you know um, trying to get an isolation order, or quarantine order, or there's a need to convert the code, uh, say from red to amber or from amber to blue, and whatever. And that's why I said at the beginning that uh, we fully appreciate that the public may have questions on the various measures. If um, if the, we have enough information online to help you, then it will save you time to try to make the call. Of course, we know that some people may not know. Uh, may not be used to um, searching online, but then there are various hotlines that I mentioned and that will help you to make inquiries. And of course, uh, when uh, there are various measures launched, we could expect uh, people to ask, uh, more people asking questions about those measures. That's why recently there are more questions about the vaccine pass. And we find that uh, many people actually wanted to um, give report of uh, or declare uh, their positive cases that they didn't do so at the time. But and as I said, now if people try to make the declaration afterwards, well, instead, uh, would you consider whether the vaccine will help you? In that case, you should just get vaccinated and you don't need to be worried and you don't need to keep making such phone calls. Next, on the left of the last row, the lady in blue. I'm from Ming Pao. Good afternoon. First, about the monkeypox case. Just now, Dr. Chuang said that uh, uh, there are you know, uh, how many people there are in that group. Um, and then that patient had uh, uh, f um, f um, a soft throat and also difficulty swallowing. How come it's related to monkeypox and not COVID? And what about the uh, case of the patient? Do you need to administer the medication? And then uh, which um, um, uh, vaccine are you buying? LC LC16 or LVCN? Now you say you don't expect many ca uh, the need for many people to get vaccinated. So uh, you say you uh, help people get vaccinated, but is it before or after exposure? And then for the Eastern Hospital, how many doctors are there at the cardiology section there? Uh, what uh, no emergency services have been affected, and uh, how um, much? Uh, uh, how many people do you have to redeploy to that section? Doctor Lee first on the cardiology section because uh, there is a center for uh, catheter so that's why most uh, many cardiologists work there often now there are uh, 12 uh, cardiologists who use that pantry we have tested them all seven tested positive and five tested negative as I said as they did not um, uh, uh, go to show show gatherings together like having meals and taking off the mask that's why they're not listed as close contacts In other hospitals uh, uh, and, and in other clusters, uh, we have support services. That's why emergency services have not been affected. But of course, if uh, uh, there is need for more support later on, we do have a mechanism in place. Uh, we have a central coordinating community to deploy um, cardiologists to help out. You mentioned monkeypox or well, for the patient, his condition is stable. We need to do more tests to decide whether we'll use that special medication. 
you asked a number of persons who may need vaccines or who need to pay attention. For that particular flight, PR300, there are about 80 odd persons in quarantine hotels. And then uh, we need to actually do an actual count on those uh, who were at the hospital and, not, and those who are now in the in quarantine hotel. Now, on the 5th of uh, September, he uh, had sore throat and um, going by the established procedure, he uh, informed us of his symptoms and we were suspected that he may have um, some sort of disease. So he was sent to the accident emergency department and then there the examination showed that uh, he, he was suspected to have contracted monkeypox and that's why we were notified. The gentleman in the red t-shirt please. I'm from AM730 about the monkeypox case. This 30 year old male, is he a Hong Kong resident or is he a visitor? Now, uh, you say you arranged for close contacts to get vaccinated. Would it be a mandatory or voluntary arrangement? Uh, what about hotel, you know, manage, uh, you know, um, handling his uh, the bed sheets and other items in the hotel room? Are there any special guidelines to follow or they just need to follow the infection control guidelines for COVID? Now, um, Dr. Troy said in the past few uh, days you received over, uh, yesterday you received 140,000 plus calls. But what about the uh, usual number of calls each day? Uh, was, the, was it a particularly busy day yesterday? How many staff members are there to answer calls? Could they cope? And now for the social distancing measures, they, uh, they will all expire soon. So do you have plans to announce new measures or tighten the existing measures? First about calls, hotline calls. Now in the past week, uh, we could see that uh, there are many calls. Uh, every day there are over 100,000 calls. That's the case in the past week. For the uh, CHP um, hotline, uh, it's manned by 100 staff members. But if there are many calls per hour, and uh, if uh, people have many questions to ask, of course, uh, each call won't be too brief, and that means uh, uh, we've used up the full capacity of the hotline service and other people who couldn't, couldn't call in. It's not desirable. Of course, if we deploy more staff to answer more calls, still we could not handle more than 100,000 calls a day. That's why we need to find other ways to disseminate the information to the public. And that's why I stressed earlier on that uh, people could um, uh, ac ha gain access to online information. We're also considering the use of uh, information technology to help people find the answers they need easier. For example, Q&As, if they could um, get information there, it would be useful. So we'll try to do that. Dr. Chuang. For that case, uh, he holds a Hong Kong identity card. As for you mentioned the um, cleaning and disinfection of that hotel room. Well, the hotel should follow the standards of COVID and that will be good enough. And you see, you know, for the beddings, um, they, you must not, um, you know, um, uh, wave them in any way. Otherwise, the, the, the germs may, spread, may, be, may uh, be disseminated. Next, please. Uh, although we don't have any uh, any drugs or vaccines that we would f um, compel people to use, but uh, as, as there were cases that we may use vaccine or drugs for uh, post-exposure treatment. Uh, that's uh, firstly to reduce the chance of um, onset and second to reduce uh, community transmission or transmission through personal behavior. Next, uh, the gentleman on to the left, second last row. Good doctor, some questions from the South China Morning Post. Um, so the first question, uh, again, about the monkeypox case. Uh, it was mentioned that the patient had been in two separate countries before and he had uh, these symptoms for a while already. Does the CHP know or um, perhaps have an idea where he was infected? Was it the Philippines or was it in the US or uh, uh, the other country that was in? Um, the, the second question, I uh, wanted to ask a little bit about the um, uh, with the recent cases about the 
uh, the doctor that was arrested on suspicion of issuing false vaccine exemption certificates. Um, the police have said they're invest uh, they think the, the number is around 6,000. Uh, are more documents being investigated uh, by the government? Uh, do you have an estimate on the number of these uh, certificates that are affected or issued by this doctor? Uh, and also, I um, uh, wanted to ask a bit more about the further plans on lowering the, um, uh, the extending the vaccine pass scheme to children aged between uh, 5 to 11. Thank you. Okay, so, so um, maybe I'll let uh, Dr. Jong to respond to you about the uh, investigation of the uh, monkeypox case that uh, we have conducted our um, epidemiological investigations and that um, the, the patients have traveled to um, two three countries before arriving in Hong Kong, and we noted there are some high-risk exposure during his visit in one of the countries. So maybe Dr. John, please. Yeah, based on the um, date of onset of symptoms, incubation period, and the uh, high-risk activity, we suspect that, uh, based on this preliminary information, we suspect that uh, the patient might have um, acquired the infection during, her, during his stay in the United States. So uh, for the case, about the investigation of the um, uh, medical exemption certificates that um, police department is conducting the investigation right now. So um, we don't have much to supplement, but um, uh, later on we will issue a um, press release statement to remind public that um, they, should, um, they should get the uh, formal document in a proper manner instead of um, using um, illegal uh, way to get any information. So uh, for the uh, vaccine pass, which um, we propose the age will be lower to um, five years old, uh, there will be some announcement later on this week and uh, I don't have any supplement at this moment. <laughs> Thank you. So um, it is quite difficult to screen out monkeypox in the airport, but um, we will surely enhance our um, health education and promotions and reminders to all inbound travelers that in case they have any symptoms suggestive of any kind of infectious disease, they have to report to our colleagues in the um, port health divisions at the airport or in other uh, ground causing boundaries. So it may help us to intercept any case of um, infectious disease as early as possible. Uh, last question, the lady in a black vest uh, at the back, please. Economic uh, times. In terms of monkeypox, um, what are the uh, discharge criteria? Are you going to be procuring any medication to tackle monkeypox? And uh, what kind of vaccines uh, will you procure and how many doses? And will this case uh, be in any way affecting the discussion on the 0 plus 7 uh, protocol? And w what about the um, non-emergency uh, services that are affected? Um, and at the PYNEH, are there any patients that have been transferred to other hospitals? And also the uh, vaccine pass uh, for children, uh, this will be lowered to the age of five. Uh, will the details be announced this week? And the, the Committee on Children's Rights expresses concern about the uh, impact arising from that. The children might be left unattended at home, and the mental well-being of the children might also be affected as a result of this measure. Well, let me supplement a little bit first, and then I defer to Dr. Lee uh, to let you know about the discharge criteria. Now, in relation to monkeypox, uh, we attach a great deal of importance to that. Now, there is always a risk uh, there for uh, importation. So, in terms of uh, monkeypox, when, I mean, as I said in answer to uh, some of the previous questions, uh, if anybody coming to Hong Kong uh, has any um, symptoms or any discomfort, they should tell us about it. We're not talking um, just about COVID. We adopt this measure for anything else in Hong Kong. If uh, one is in a quarantine hotel or in the community, if there are any uh, problems, any discomfort, the uh, patients should um, report this to the uh, healthcare authorities. 
the monkeypox doesn't have any direct link uh, with the, the number of days for quarantine. There are so many other uh, communicable diseases that we are worried about being imported into Hong Kong, not just monkeypox. So um, this uh, doesn't have any link with uh, the number of quarantine days. Now for the uh, vaccine pass, the key thing, the key message we'd like to disseminate to the public and the parents is that um, the vaccines would be uh, terribly important to protect um, children and senior citizens against COVID. The parents might have uh, their own misgivings. And for a long time in the past, we would like to uh, get hold of um, the medical team or the um, pediat pediatrician uh, to explain to the public how helpful these uh, vaccines are uh, to the children. If, cho if unvaccinated children get infected, uh, the consequences will be very dire. So uh, the, the vaccine, the vaccination will be very important. So we have to uh, step up um, the uh, the awareness of the, the parents regarding vaccination. We hope that um, the parents would appreciate uh, that um, the, the vaccines are very, very important. Dr. Lee, right about the uh, monkeypox, uh, we mentioned a moment ago that he was admitted to the hospital. Uh, we we deal with uh, the, the symptoms uh, for serious cases, for um, uh, complications. We have to uh, prescribe the uh, special medication, and we have to make sure um, that uh, there will be no other bacterial infection. Now, in terms of discharge, it, it is a clinical decision, but we will uh, look at the isolation and we will be coordinating with um, the government in that regard. Uh, this is all the time we have for today. Thank you all very much. Right. For the emergency uh, services, uh, we will maintain uh, these. Uh, we will maintain all the other services in the Hong Kong East cluster. Um, the cardiologists and other, and other hospitals will also help out if necessary. The uh, Central Coordination Committee can also uh, deploy cardiologists from other clusters to help out. Thank you all very much.